Okay, so today are, we are going to start uh, uh, discussing about the design pro design processes. Okay, in particular, uh, I'll try not to spend too much time on this. Uh, uh, how the requirements coming from a good human-centered uh, design uh, can be integrated into the software development process. <laughs> uh, I'm focusing on software development processes, but in general, this applies to any kind of design process basically so first of all uh, we still haven't uh, given uh, a good definition or a comprehensive definition of the goal we want to reach okay we want to modify the process so that the new process will lead to a result with a better usability okay that's what we said uh, we gave uh, you know um, um, a, a nice definition of usability like uh, uh, don't make me think uh, so something that uh, uh, intuitively should be easy to use uh, and uh, doesn't require any uh, additional cognitive capabilities or doesn't introduce any ambiguity from the point of view of the user okay but uh, uh, usually usability is a metric no it's a quality that you can measure like performance like size like cost like uh, uh, any kind of uh, measurement you can take uh, about a software system or a hardware software system you can also measure usability so it's not just uh, intuition it's something that you can scientifically measure it uh, some aspects of usability will be more qualitative uh, but <coughs> some other will be more quantitative for example the the rate of errors is a quantitative measure so other if we have 100 users that use our system what is the percentage of errors that they make the uh, uh, um, the measurement of how the system is perceived as nice and easy to use is a qualitative judgment for the person do i like do you do you like this application is it easy is it useful is it nice so these are also things that can be measured so <coughs> every time you are we are sending out questionnaires about uh, any different topic where we ask for the subjective evaluation of a quantity and usability is no different from this and this is a, an example of the most important uh, dimensions uh, or attributes uh, that make up usability so usability is uh, <coughs> sorry i promise i not i'm not dying um it's something that is useful so does it solve some problem that the users have <coughs> does it help me solving some of my problems is it easy to learn so it's something that i read uh, that i need to read a manual before or i can use it immediately <coughs> <coughs> without needing some learning process for that so uh, um, it's another dimension and once i've learned how to use the system is it easy to remember huh? because there are some systems maybe that and the first time they are difficult because maybe something which is outside our mental model but once we get them they are easy in the, in the second third and fourth time other time other um, services uh, every time you come back uh, you have to relearn it from scratch because the learning didn't stick in your mind because it was not uh, well organized and so you have to uh, learn again so this is easy no these are you can imagine we will see something in more detail how they can measure okay you put a person in front of a system and you see how much time it needs uh, to be able to execute the function or you do this uh, and uh, one month later you recall the same person and you check whether uh, what is the improvement or the lack of improvement uh, in uh, uh, the speed of uh, execution of the function okay so everything can be verified by experiments hmm? effectiveness uh, or does it reach the goal so the usefulness is does the goal please me so i i like uh, what the system is providing me but the effectiveness is that the system really provide it or it just give me 90 percent before the the, the the end of the of the goal efficiency is uh, uh, the time spent time and effort required uh, to reach the goal how many clicks how many seconds how many actions <coughs> how many screens how many pages do i need to get to the goal okay so uh, once learned 
uh, after the learning phase, uh, is it efficient to use or does it require every time uh, more time is needed? Visibility is a bit more difficult to, to measure whether we the system helps the user understand its internal state, no? the evaluation growth uh, that we discussed uh, last week. Errors are errors minim um, minimized. So the number of errors that users make, is it low? And when, and when an error is made, is it uh, recoverable or irrecoverable? So if I, can, if I make a mistake, I need to start from scratch. <coughs> or it's easy, it's difficult to make an error, and if you make the error, it's easy to recover. So to go back, for example, to the situation before making the wrong action. So are these uh, features available? And uh, uh, the last one is the most subjective of all. Do you like using the system? Do you like it? Okay. I, we are engineers, so we are you know, uh, people that are really uh, grounded in uh, something that is useful, that, reach, uh, that reaches a goal, that does something useful. Uh, but actually also the, the pleas of, uh, uh, of, uh, of enjoyment uh, for using some system is some measure that is also important. Okay. Uh, there are systems that maybe then don't have any real business goal. No? I imagine all the entertainment applications. No? They, you use them because you like it not because you reach a specific goal or, or you, you care about the efficiency or whatever. Mm -hmm. So these are all attributes <coughs> that we need uh, to um, take into account when we are designing our system. And when we, uh, we learned uh, how to program and how to structure a software engineering process, we have processes, you know, remember uh, unit testing, for example, is a method for reducing the number of bugs in the system uh, okay so we need uh, to devise some methods also for during the process for improving this kind of measurements hmm? because reducing the number of bugs uh, doesn't uh, have an uh, effect on any of this uh, huh? probably on the errors on the learnability because a buggy system is also unpredictable the uh, the state is not clear is not visible so in some way a bad software system, a bad system, is also not usable. A good system, from the point of view of just the software engineering, uh, may be use usable, may not, uh, but usability should not be an accident. Or it may happen that it's usable. No, it should be a design attribute, okay? <coughs> okay, so just an example of the main thing, like the, the short definition. So, just to have a very simplified view uh, a lot of uh, researchers proposed a lot of groups a lot of consultants proposed different uh, uh, software development processes uh, for uh, usability uh, the idea is that all these processes are human centered it means that the humans the users are should be they require them to be at the center of the development uh, design and development process huh? so for example first we must involve users put the users at the center when we define what is wanted so what's the function that the system should uh, implement huh? we call it uh, also need finding we start uh, discussing shortly about this this phase when we know there is a group of users, we want to create an application for them. And uh, what do they want, really? What do they need? What would what would they like? Hmm? So before starting, it's a before starting to design. Then, once we understand uh, what is the need that we want to solve, we start designing how to solve it. We start defining. Okay, if you want to upload. Uh, some information to a website uh, these are the steps you need to do in your interface to complete these tasks so we are designing some tasks uh, that the users will uh, that we will uh, support the users in doing so we show okay for attaining this goal the sequence of actions is this one 
we develop scenarios, we de develop tasks that describe how the system will interact with the users or how the users will interact with the system. <coughs> and also in this phase, we may or we should involve the users. We cannot just sit in our room and say, okay, these are the sequence of actions and, and this sequence is clear to me, but it may not necessarily be clear to the users. Um, many websites uh, or many, yes, especially from public administrations, uh, have all the procedures, have a lot of services, but you won't be able to find them because they are the, the path to reach for reaching them. So the function is somewhere you don't expect. You need to take a sequence of action, which is not the sequence of action that you would have taken because maybe the path is created, the sequence of action is created with the organization uh, in mind. So how the offices are organized, how the services are organized in the backend and not how the user perceives them. Hmm? So a lot of mistakes uh, are made by a wrong assumption that the user of a system has the same knowledge as the provider of the service. Hmm? Um, You know, for example, uh, you think at Polytechnico, the timetable of the exams and the timetable of the classes are always temporal information. They should be available in the same way, in the same place. Well, actually, they are separated. They are in different sections with different interfaces because the, the offices that produce these two uh, lists of, uh, of events uh, are different and the, and the processes for producing them are different and so the interface uh, will uh, is influenced uh, by an organizational issue which doesn't have reason to exist okay if from the point of view of the user of the student I want to see my schedule hmm? and put uh, together everything uh, all the time all the types of events there hmm? so that was just an example of the, the problems that we analyze here hmm? what is the most logical the most natural way huh? um, we should create uh, the model of information of the system in a way that it is as possible as similar uh, as similar as possible to the user's mental model we know that in learning the user is building a mental model of the behavior of the system. Okay, but the behavior of the system is not something that is created by God. It's something that we create. So we should create the behavior of the system in a way that the mental model that the user needs to create is already something that is the, the model he expects. They expect. Hmm? Okay, the next step <coughs> is uh, designing. Uh, designing means giving shape to this uh, set of actions so I do step one step two and step three okay but step one what is that it's a screen with a given layout with some elements and so on and the actions of the user what, sh what, what should the what should they do what should they click should they swipe should they speak should they move hmm? all of these uh, tasks are made of s different steps and every step as some interaction to be carried on by the user and so in this phase uh, we try to design the interaction steps by avoiding mistakes following conventions following guidelines and so on and having a method at this point we still uh, we already have we start to have uh, something to interact with in the first two steps it's only papers or sketches or or words at this point we start having prototypes of pages partial pages or screens so actually we can do already some evaluation on those interaction steps okay i think this button is better here i think this label uh, name is better to change it uh, i think uh, okay you think uh, as a designer let's check with the users so also during the design of the system the users can help you evaluating and testing a prototype of the interface uh, to correct uh, all the possible mistakes uh, 
in the design itself or in the mental model that you made hmm? so why do, uh, and then of course we have the implementation at the end and the deployment if everything goes right uh, you already have a precise specification that has already been validated by the users then the big task here would be to have the software development correct hmm? but we already have sorted out more, most of the issues except the real deployment of the system on the field in the wild that may bring up uh, other problems so the support we have the documentation is uh, also useful <coughs> so we want to try following a process similar to this so this is an example there are many variations like the people that get uh, really excited about the slight details about uh, these processes but uh, the, the, the basic uh, idea is that as we develop the system in every stage the users can be involved uh, can and can give us very important information hmm? um, okay this is just uh, basically what i described on the on, on the previous picture block by block so i don't i won't read it again you so you have it written when you check the slide um, you see that the most important phase uh, is uh, validation so we have an idea and we want to check that idea with some users and the main one of the main uh, tools that we have is prototyping okay designing something that can be used to evaluate uh, the system one page one detail of a page the shadow of a, of a button even so even can also be even something very small very specific whenever we have no, we are not sure <laughs> of the design choices we make we can always test them we build a small prototype we build a prototype with a purpose i want to check the login process okay let's build a prototype for that okay uh, and then we evaluate that with users maybe we, we will find out that four or five users are already enough you don't need to deploy one thousand of users <coughs> they give you some feedback and you can change and iterate prototypes are important because they are the tool for involving users and they also should be cost effective you know implementing a full system just to discover that is wrong hell if you have to modify a complete system it's very expensive you need to go back and change a lot of requirements and change a lot of software and uh, refactor everything it takes time prototypes are something that in many cases can be thrown away okay i did it i got the information i needed and i put this information into the design process the prototype itself well in some cases some part of it can be reused but mostly it was so cheap hmm, to, to develop uh, that they don't care hmm. okay uh, <coughs> this <coughs> in some way should map to the software engineering process so you have a full uh, software engineering course uh, where you um, study no, different types of uh, software development processes okay we we don't care about this or uh, at least we are not going into detail into any of this uh, but the question is okay if your organization your group or your company uh, define a given process to follow how or where is aci development happening the beginning at the end huh? so the answer is uh, simple always a step ahead so before every step of your design process every iteration in an agile process every release in an iterative uh, process every step in the whoa, waterfall now, now nobody likes it anymore 90 percent of people still use waterfall but uh, and so on so before every step where you commit significant resources you must check uh, usability at that point you have inserted that into the process okay before every time step implementation step you need a user center step okay which user center step depends on the step on the on the advancement of the project in some cases it's just a need finding 
in some cases you can already evaluate usabilities or some experiment with users and so on so all the techniques uh, that we are studying that we study will apply to different steps of the design process but the idea is always to start an implementation design software development task uh, only when we are sure that the usability part uh, has been checked because otherwise the risk is that okay, uh, uh, why are we slowing the design process for usability no really we are not slowing it we are ensuring the success of the implementation because otherwise we risk implementing something which is, will not work and so later on we have to rewrite it or to change it or we won't have the resources to the resources or the time to change it so we are damned uh, to have an application which is not optimal okay um well i i i don't want to run along on this part okay so this is the idea so uh, in the different steps of the processes we need to insert some usability feature and so what is the first step uh, where the, the software development process happen the requirements definition so in every process you start by deciding what you want to build so at the given point you have <coughs> a requirements document it can be very simple in the form of stories for example for agile development uh, it can be a thick book in terms of full functional and non-functional requirements for waterfall models it may take very many shapes but a given at a given point somebody is defining we want to build the system with these four functionalities okay in this step need finding need finding techniques uh, that we start discussing now uh, are used uh, to involve the users in the definition of which are these four or five or 27 different features that the system is going to implement so need finding is a, <coughs> a task for understanding which are the user system requirements and the user needs what does the user want and what does the user need hmm? and how how can we do that huh? can we read the mind of the users not really hmm? so we have techniques need finding techniques uh, like interviews uh, like questionnaires and so on we start discussing how they can be applied uh, uh, to our project so this is also the task <coughs> that you are going to to do or to develop uh, in the in the in this week and the next one when you you know fix uh, your idea to submit for the project uh, before the end of the next week we will ask you to do this need finding uh, by doing some interviews or other things the interviews probably are the easiest part uh, uh, for understanding from the users which are the best features of your system well it's your system in the sense that you are building it but actually it's their system it's a system for them hmm? let's not forget that finding potential user needs hmm? needs or desires need or want depends on your point of view hmm? something may be really needed a requirement something would be some just a wish something that i would like to but okay depends on the strength of this wish but it's it always come from the users and uh, what do users need first of all we need to define who are these users so the first question is defining who the users are we cannot think about usability we cannot think about needs uh, if we don't know the target users we define who is going to use our system maybe one specific kind of user only for students only for runners only for uh, musicians or maybe different groups of users that will use the system probably different functionality for every group mm, so this is the first step who are the users now uh, if i know who are the users i can check how these users today are doing the, those tasks i'm not creating something new very seldom i'm creating a way for users to communicate you know to exchange messages okay how are these users today exchanging messages 
I'm creating a way for uh, you know scheduling uh, parties. Okay, how are these users today scheduling parties? If I don't understand how they execute the tasks today, I cannot even start to imagine how I can propose them to do it better or to do it with my system. What is the context in which they are doing it? It's something that happens uh, when sitting at the desktop with all the full concentration. It's something that happens uh, on the tram while being pushed in every, uh, so in, uh, on the smartphone. It's something that happens in a group where people are together so they can discuss, they, say they can share information. So the context is important in the way uh, they can use it. It's something that should happen in the classroom. So for example, you cannot use, make noises or use audio or let users speak, for example, because the context is something that requires not to have uh, sounds coming out from smartphone or people talking to their smartphone, for example. Okay, so it's important uh, also to know the, the, the context in which uh, the users are expected to do these, uh, these actions. Hmm? So first we, we need to, who are the users and in what context uh, we want them to help, we want to help them. And uh, the other question is, okay, let's check uh, the current situation, hmm? all the background. And uh, why are we spending time in talking about need finding? So I identify the users, so the front row people, six users there, or everybody with glasses here. Okay, it's a group of users. I need some. Pr I have some proposition for them. And uh, for understanding what do they need, uh, I could just ask them. Okay. We are all grown people. We can <laughs> we can speak. I can ask you what do you need, and we close the chapter. We go home. Why not? Hmm? Okay, let's find out. First of all, users. So the the guru is telling the first commandment is know your users. This is the most important thing. Really know them really, okay. you need to categorize them in some way okay are all the like, like i would say before all, uh, are all the users of the system belonging to the same category are they all students or are there different categ of categories and groups students and teachers and administrators or whatever so I need to partition my users in different groups and then find the needs of each group separately. Hmm? <coughs> what are the characteristics of each group, of each of these groups, of these categories or classes? You know, uh, uh, Something for a teenager should be different from a uh, service for a person an adult in 30 years and should be diff different from uh, for a person in their 80s or 70s okay people in my age are more difficult to match because they may be closer to one or the other groups um, are they novice users are they what is their their skill their uh, attitude with technology they already using computers are they already using smartphones and so on and it's easy to miss the mark here. Uh, I had the discussion yesterday with some colleagues about uh, the course of um, uh, computer science at the, at the first year, uh, informatica that we, we all, you all got at the first year. And uh, one of the discussion was uh, a lot of people are ranking low, very low that course uh, on the dimension of uh, prerequisites. And I couldn't understand that. Well, so uh, we, in that course, we are starting. It's not a nice course, but it's a, it's a topic for a different day. But we start from zero. We start from main. Okay. We don't require any prerequisite in that course. So why are all the courses? It's not the question of the teacher. As a score of four out of ten. So it's a red. It's a very. And then uh, I talk to some people say, oh, but th there's, there are some students that come here and they are not able to organize their files in folders using a Mac, using Windows, nothing special. 
because my baby they uh, now they are they are uh, used to to smartphones where the concept of file doesn't exist you only have applications and so you don't they don't they don't they are not able to organize their files or to copy them in a, except in very very basic ways it's something i didn't expect i took for granted it was so basic well it may be um, 15 years ago more or less at the polytechnic we had some courses before the first year to explain them the basics of file management word excel so the a very short version of the um, ecdl at that time ecdl was not yet uh, um, standardized so it didn't exist we did this at the polytechnic at a given point we stopped doing that because people came here that they knew already this this concept now they don't anymore so it's very difficult to clear our mind from our assumption from our background and trying to understand what really what is really the, the real experience of the users in that specific field hmm? uh, the, the most difficult part is really to clear in your mind uh, <coughs> if you are thinking about a system that is made for everybody you're thinking wrong hmm? never try to be generic group of users categories have one person in mind we'll talk about personas later in the second step try to uh, analyze the characteristic of the persons and in particular you my me you each of you is not a representative user well you could be a user of your system why not if it's a user a system for booking a, of organizing a party I maybe sometime I will use it also for myself so I will be a user but they will not be the normal the representative uh, the typical kind of user okay we are a very strange category okay we already have made peace with that for yourself uh, we are nerds and we see everything in with a very strange light okay so all the skills that we have as designers developers all the knowledge the background that we have the attitude is not the typical user so there may be some cases for applications that are made for students applications that are made for developers where we fit into the target something made for us okay, github is made for us and uh, but uh, um, in all the other cases don't think that you uh, are representative for a 22 uh, 22 years old uh, person you are not okay um, and so let's not simplify by saying I would do this hmm? always listen and never speak and if you are <coughs> developing some software or some application for a customer for a client for a so somebody who's come to you and pays I want you to develop this tool and you say okay who are the users what do they need and they will reply don't care I know my users I know my employees I know what they need okay kick them in the back and try to speak to the users so uh, it is a presumption that the boss knows the work of his workers of his underlings it's not there's a presumption that the client that the, uh yeah some some customer that you have uh, knows the needs of their users or not the needs of their uh, employees or not the needs of their group of people hmm? uh, don't trust that there are people that are on a higher hierarchical level are not good proxies for the behavior of the people that really really use the system so if i want to build a new system for the post office i don't need i don't want to speak with the post office director but with the post office clerk who will be using that uh, 1000 hours a year and knows all the tricks of the current system and all the problems of the current system and have has 30 years of experience in getting this system to work hmm? um so this is also an important point not in this context of the course but in general you will find a lot of people that will tell you 
I know what my users need or, the, or how my users work hmm? <coughs> and how do I come to get in to know my users well talking to them there are many ways of talking some are more formal some are more informal some are more direct some are more contextual some are really involving a group of people to go with you to walk with you during the development process so involving them in different steps every month they come with you discuss this, uh, see what the pro what progress you are making with the application and give feedback in some other cases you just go there and speak with some possible users hmm? by passing corporate policies so talking real to with the real users and not with their bosses not with their uh, try to really uh, don't get involved into the constraints hmm? and uh, uh, talking to the user you can understand uh, what they are doing now the context real in which they work the behavior their behavior when they're executing some activities what's wrong what are the difficulties what are the workarounds and so on so this is precious information because we want to avoid in our system to recreate the same pain points uh, to recreate uh, or we to force them to use uh, workarounds if if a procedure says that you need to be a b and c but people working on that procedure are did find in the past some workaround so they don't do a b c but they're doing a b prime and then c it means that the, the original procedure is wrong it's not intuitive so if they are doing that it's not it's for simplifying their work so we want to understand with not which is the official procedure but especially which is the workaround because that will be information for us we want to build our system according to their mental model their process maybe we can also improve it but we need to realize huh, what is the current situation <coughs> even if they are executing some task manually without an information system we want to build an information system the process is the same don't copy a process that is that has problems hmm, that already has some problems watching users hmm, it's another dimension so you do your work i watch it's a bit creepy okay uh, but there are this there's a method uh, we'll discuss uh, in, in a second uh, uh, about uh, really trying to see people at work so one thing is come uh, okay let's go to the bar and tell me about your work so we are talking to the people and the other okay let's go to the work can i come with you and have a look at what you are doing it's very difficult different they they oh, both are important both are important um interview is more indirect so people will tell you only what what they feel what they think is relevant if you observe them you really see all the um, issues and uh, remember the um, the coffee pot okay from norman uh, people will not relay maybe some information about what's wrong because they think they are wrong So you can tell the no it's not your fault tell me what's wrong but they will refrain for from that because they think they are stupid hmm? and uh, if i observe them it's easier to see where they're stopping where they're stumbling where they're stuttering in their actions and where their difficulties and so i i can then see okay but i saw that you did that action does it feel natural ah no every time i do it I, so I, you start a discussion from an observation so serving uh, in the context uh, is also important and there are very, very various methods that we start discussing now <coughs> and there's a third possibility if you can talk to a user it's good if you can also observe a user is better and if you can't or if you don't have the resources to find a user or to go into the users every time because you know you we need to do that several times during the process not just once okay you can also imagine users so you create it's difficult okay you create an imaginary user and you ask yourself uh, how would he behave 
or what would what would be his response in this case or his actions in this case what would that person prefer uh, so there's this conceptual tool called personas where you build uh, an imaginary person you give them a name an age a picture you know what's uh, if there are any pets uh, you just may you build up a person that fits your profile that fits your target users and they will become your friend you can start thinking about oh yesterday sally told me that uh, who's sally oh, it's my persona uh, okay you, you could we are always strange people but uh, personalizing an idea is not just a user a typical user of group a no it's sally so it's easy to imagine what would sally do or what would sally say in this condition of course it's always a proxy you can imagine what they will say but the more concrete you have in imagining and maybe of course you must have also some real sellies to talk to at a given point but in some cases it's a very useful tool for describing the action of the user very direct hmm? and uh, okay so these are basically <coughs> the the universe of methods that we can start to discuss about requirements before even have <coughs> before even having the first version of the system we still don't have anything we only have a, a target groups and a context in which we want to help them okay uh, so what are the methods the first method is observation hmm? there's this mantra says you can observe a lot uh, just by watching okay watching is a physical action observing is reflecting on what you are seeing and this comes from uh, um, a bigger domain which is that of ethnog ethnographic observation okay the word observation starts in the ethnographic domain you know eth ethnographics very difficult to pronounce word uh, is uh, <laughs> what the anthropologists sometimes do they go and find uh, some tribe uh, some strange tribe somewhere and they didn't have any contacts with uh, with other tribes and you go, they want to know how they behave what are the customs what are the religions whatever so they try to go there and live with them embed into their culture embed into their environment becoming one of them and then understanding how they're behaving and why they're behaving this way okay we are not going to go and live with to our users homes uh, usually and um, but our goal is try to be as close as possible to the users to understand uh, the necessary data to influence uh, interface design so we don't need to know everything about our users but we need to at least understand them when they are executing some tasks relevant to our project <coughs> and remember last time uh, when talking about the normal model a uh, normal model uh, we dis we said that the users have a language different from the system still better different groups of users have different languages so we must first understand and know the language of the group of users that we are observing it's not our own language okay how, how many times in a discussion you are using a sentence a word sorry for which you give a meaning because in engineering that word has a meaning and other people uh, like i don't know, I don't know the, the theory uh, every person from science uh, has a very high concept of theory theory is the, is what you what you have in the scientific method after a lot of observations checks uh, verifications and uh, peer check and so on at the end at the top of everything you have a theory uh, in other in the popular science a theory is just something you made up five minutes ago it's just your theory okay the same word has radical different meanings at the opposite spectrum spectrum of the level of, of, of strength huh? so it's the same here if we don't understand the meaning of this of the words or the language that the user speak it will never be able to capture and then build the model of, for, of for our system that will match them and the environment where they're working are they working in a place that was, which is very noisy uh, can they get close to a computer or there are they far 
can they use the hands or they are they dirty hmm? okay our work is mostly sitting at the computer on a desk but it's not everybody's work a lot of applications in medicine failed for just that reason how can you imagine how can you imagine giving a laptop computer or even a tablet to a nurse nurses need their hands they work with their hands they already have, uh, they already have the searing they already have the, the, pres the prescription they they need to take the patient uh, they need to move the uh, the, the, the drugs uh, and so they, they cannot put down the drug take the laptop insert the data put down the laptop take the syring syringe and so on no, it's not something that will help them or or pushing a cart uh, with a computer on top of it okay so it's not something that is uh, uh, these designs where they try to put computers into the, the hospitals didn't take into account the environment hmm? and they fa they all failed of course um, listening and observing carefully so usually you should be you, you would be there just to observe let me see how you work and in sometimes you just chime in with a question okay i saw you did this can you explain me why you're doing that in that way you can learn how they think and this and how that and the speaker and what's the meaning hmm? in some cases you can also record what happens there are mixed feelings about this so if you have a recording of what happens first of all it only only works in some environments where the environment is fixed in a new in a room it cannot be in a outside the location or whatever recording is powerful because then you can play it back and check the details of what was happening and count the errors count how many times did they put it back how many times did they check the name of the person and you cannot do that while observing you can only do that afterwards but it takes a lot of time and also recording somebody changes their behavior in general observation is not is never um, it's always perceived in some way by the people being observed so if i'm doing something on my own i'll be i'll doing it differently from doing that with an observer if you are somebody that is checking on you that is observing you you'll, tr you'll try your best to be your best version and you have a long maybe you take more shortcuts and so the observation is affected by the observer and more so if you are recording so that people know they are recording recorded and so they try to behave better hmm? uh, a middle way was, is to take notes so you cannot at the end of the day you cannot remember everything you don't have the time to see the recording so maybe ju you just observe and take notes so it's something very not very intrusive and people are not very impressed by that okay uh, of course the, the risks are that you observe something and you interpret it in a in a wrong way because you're applying your own mental model and not their mental model to understand why it's they're doing some actions uh, you are disrupting their normal practice because in a way you are there and so they are not behaving exactly if you, if you was, weren't there and this may lead uh, to some important information not being found okay so there's a, there's a risk but in this context of observation so you can imagine uh, your context your project and try to say okay these are three users i will try to follow them during 20 minutes one hour one day it depends of course on the task no? but usually a few users for a little time is already enough to learn a lot hmm? learn what they are doing now which is our first question how they are reaching the goal now uh, what are their goals what do they have in mind why they are doing the values mean why the motivation why they are doing some action in a way um, this is a strange question how are the activity embedded in larger ecology what does it mean it simply means that uh, no no one is doing an action in isolation they work in a group in a company so they are doing something with a person uh, there's a oh, sorry there's a group of persons the other people around them 
and so they are part of a process that always invo also involves other people so you should you should also take into account the interactions that they have with other people or with other with other artifacts in the environment hmm? uh, not all people are equal so even if you have already at defined a target group a group of people given characteristics uh, okay you have three persons and they all they all all three will behave differently in any given task in any given detail so there will be some differences some are significant some not some are just personal dif differences some are meaningful because maybe they are related to their experience with their the rest of their backgrounds and so you you would probably take in, into account of these differences when being your system so it's not easy to observe this okay it's, um, and some some other context so some actions uh, are made different uh, differently in different times of the day so it's something that you can observe so actually imagine that you have a, a notebook where you are trying to not information for yourself uh, for understanding right now we are still we are still not uh, designing the system we are trying just to understand the users first step how the user behaves so that we can use the information in the next step for designing the tasks the, the procedures but if i don't know the be the user behavior i cannot create a procedure that will fit that behavior okay process versus practice uh, the process is how things should be done in theory practice is how things are done in the reality if you talk to a responsible person to the boss they will always talk to you about the process if you interview a person probably they will also talk to you about the process by saying but in some cases they make some exception if you observe them you observe their practice what they really do that in some way should match the process but it never it's never almost the case and uh, the difference is that the, the practice the workarounds they have the shortcuts embed a lot of learning people repeat operation for hours and hours and hours every day and they optimize them so all the information that is in the practice in the behavior that is not codified encoded in the, in the process is information learned from the field huh? which is very important for us to 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 capture and so that we can use it uh, observing <coughs> can be done in two different contexts uh, uh, the easiest one uh, we call it and doesn't always work but neither of two always works but uh, it's controlled observation so we want to see how people uh, i don't know use a smartphone for giving for for playing or for messaging okay we ask uh, 10 users to come to our lab in our laboratory and say okay be free exchange messages uh, for the next half an hour i will observe you just be natural do what you would what you you would do normally or i'm building a new coffee maker so you have uh, some example uh, examples or prototypes or maybe some existing machines and they see how people use them i bring them in the lab uh, maybe i have some nice cameras a nice environment and so on and people go there and try to feel uh, natural okay so it's easy to do it's easy to repeat because you have an environment uh, you may have all the recordings uh, it's easy for me because people come to my house uh, or to my lab <coughs> so it's it's easy to do in a, in a way um, of course it changes the context because that action of making the coffee in the lab is not exactly the same it doesn't feel the same as making coffee at home at seven in the morning when you are still trying to not to crash against the walls and uh, so the, the act of observing someone doing something will change uh, the context will change the behavior okay but in a way we are living of approximations here nothing is perfect we are trying to get information by many different ways this is one way there are good points bad points about that one possibility hmm? nothing will be ever perfect the alternative if, uh, is the naturalistic observation you try to go there to their environment and observe them in their environment so it's more reliable of course uh, and also more useful we say it's there for ideation but because if i'm doing some experiments in my lab 
the environment will be carefully designed for me to check one specific aspect but if i go to them their specific in their office or their uh, uh, i don't know where, 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 where people are working i will see other things that initially i didn't think of i can observe something that may be unrelated and say oh this is, a, um, is an important point hmm? um but of course it's more difficult to repeat it's more difficult to do a, a, at a large scale because if you are one observer and 10 per 10 people come to your lab uh, you make 10. if you are one observer and go one day at uh, observing a given lab a given office then you made one observation so for making 10 you may you must spend 10 days so it's more expensive it costs more and so you will do less uh, even if they provide you more information so usually it's always a combination of these different techniques and if you go there uh, how to blend into the environment uh, so there are two techniques uh, for observing do it to two strategies one is becoming part of the wall i call it so don't don't mind me i'm here just imagine my, i'm a poster on the wall behave like i wasn't there okay this is called the complete observer so you are fully an observer you're just observing you don't interact you don't interfere any it's not possible not to inter interfere any uh, totally but um and so you must feel them uh, like you are, they should really forget about you as soon as possible mm -hmm. so this is some time so in this case you just observe and if you have questions to ask you must defer questions to the later time at the end of the day please schedule 10 minutes uh, just i have a, this little question because i don't i didn't understand people of course maybe they they have difficulty in understanding why they did something specific three hours ago but when they did it they didn't feel your pressure your eyes on them and so maybe it was more natural the alternative is the complete participant so i become one of you okay i'm coming to you you are making pizzas i'm making pizzas also so i dress in white and i wash my hands and so let me try, I try to help you like uh, you are an apprentice try to learn imagine going there and try to learn the job what do i need to know to learn the job to do the job as well as, as, as you as you are doing it so you will really become one of them maybe for a short time might be superficial because you won't have the expertise <coughs> so if they think of you as one of the, their team effectively you will disappear and at that point you are more integrated and it's it's easier also to check and validate your, your observation directly with the users okay while they're doing that oh i saw you did that so you are just chatting with them you are one of them so there are two different you know strategies that can be used in this case and uh, when when the day is finished you are not finished because the, 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 the day of the day of observation is over but then you go home and you need to fix your ideas because it's, just, it's not just fun going there and making pizzas huh? but you were there for getting some information so this information are the impression you gave you you had the impression they referred to you they they told you the stories maybe you ask them some questions so you have some ranking or some rating mm, that uh, you ask to, uh, to, to the people you can write a report you should write a report you should also have noticed some objects or artifacts uh, that they call them in the workplace in the environment so whenever you see a post-it note that's an important uh, hint an important clue that something is, war is, uh, is wrong or there's potentially some point of improvement because if there's a post-it note somewhere then some there's some information which is difficult to remind or some action that is strange and so you need to read the instructions every time uh, where people leave some objects in some place there are all clues that explain the process 
maybe better than the explanation of the people because people are very it's very difficult for people to reflect on what they are doing well they can tell you what they are doing with some precision it's not perfect but they're reflecting why they are doing exactly in that way okay because because yes because i'm doing it in this way what do you want from me okay you came here you asked me quick me questions uh, i'm doing that uh, uh, it's 30 years i've been doing that uh, but if you are there you are observing you can also extract information in the form of stories anecdotes uh, incidents that happened there are always information all of this information about uh, errors that may happen and then you want to minimize the system and errors remember are never fault of the user so their fault or the absence of error is a good point uh, is a feature of your system especially the errors and the workarounds that you specifically observe so you can understand the context in which they appear and if you you you, may, you will see that the cause of the error the reason is not what the users think uh, maybe there's another hidden reason that can be removed and the user gives the fault to something else so this is the when you have the luxury of serving the users uh, there's another techniques uh, uh, when uh, you ask the users to observe themselves so you cannot you want to serve 10 families in their daily life you cannot go there and spend 10 days and they will never host you in their homes uh, and one technique is uh, uh, giving or asking users uh, to take notes for you creating a diary maybe a paper diary or a computerized diary in which they note some information of course uh, the question should be structured so uh, please not every time you switch the light on or please not every time you answer or you check in your phone or um, and try to s write me where you were in which room uh, and why you did that for example so you have to trigger that you have to set some triggers on the user's actions and say okay please in the next three days or the next week uh, please every time you do this please give me this information and then you can collect the notes uh, and uh, analyze them and of course after that i can also have an interview a talk to to clarify some points hmm? of course uh, you must pay them people you cannot expect people to do that because you are so nice okay you even for the observation the observation is easier because you, you you agree that with the organization that hosts the people so the boss says that tomorrow there will be an observer okay but you are going upon their request in this case uh, you need their people might be normal users uh, that will spend time for you and you need to motivate them cash is always a good motivation but other kind of incentives can be recognition or <coughs> or um, or gifts uh, or uh, prices so maybe you only you cannot give them that's a choice you can give 20 euros each or uh, one price of 500 euros uh, and then you randomly select one of the people that participated and then you extract the gift so there are different ways of doing that okay but people should do that uh, okay because they are kind and uh, with you but they should be m involved because they also have a motivation hmm? and uh, i will just to show you uh, an example that we did uh, with uh, alberto monge which is one of the phd students in my group uh, um, they uh, we will try to understand uh, what kind of uh, rules a user would have to would like to program in a possible smart home so imagine your home is smart and you can program it you can program with some if then paradigm so very simple rules when something happens do, do this action when i open the door switch the light on for example so what kind of rules would you want from your home and so we created these notebooks you see a list of them they're very nice colors 
the pen was included so it was a gift a big pen it's a very high value pen and uh, but they they were asked to bring this notebook with them for a week and uh, every time they in their normal life they did some action we asked them to reflect whether this action could be automated in some way and if yes try to write uh, what was the trigger and what was the action that could be automated so this this action i don't know switch on the dishwasher at nine so the event in this case is the time and so on and so there are these books with 20 pages or so with all the notes they could take and uh, at the end of the week they return them back and we analyze them of course there was the user that only filled one or two pages just not to be uh, and other that filled a lot of more information it's normal with any user study there will be a, a wide uh, variation <coughs> and in this case uh, we create a small gadget to give them some i don't know i don't remember some something with the with the polytechnical brand uh, that you buy at the poly shop there i don't remember it's something that some euros five euros or whatever plus uh, the, we had one one sonos speaker which is a nice gift for them that was uh, extracted uh, randomly as a final prize okay for those who participated so there was in some way something changed for them it's not the value no but it's understanding that i'm bringing value to you you are returning something to me no it's a deal that you that you make with your users with your experimenter observation observing just mean okay you do your work and uh, i try to extract information from that the next step so more direct is interviews the initial question uh, what do users want i will ask them what do you want hmm? asking users about their needs and desires uh, what could possibly go wrong okay all sorts of things because they will never tell you what you need interviewing is like uh, would you like to get uh, a 30 on this course yes i am asking what you want and you reply me yes what information do i get from this none because the question is wrong so it's not a matter of asking users it's asking the right questions to extract information hmm? uh, this is one of the worst questions that could they could ask because to direct is loaded and, but we'll see that hmm? we have uh, uh, two types of interviews surveys which are made a chapter by themselves which are there are automated ways of getting information the questions that you find online and so on online or by telephone or, or, in, or also in person but usually they are very um, standardized quick to complete as much as possible hmm? or real in-person interviews so we, we sit together and we chat a bit we have i have a set of questions written down but i am not really forced to follow those questions because if i get some more information i can drill down and ask you a clarification question or more in-depth information about uh something of course it can be totally unstructured let's chat for a for for, a, for a 50 minutes uh, for a coffee about the topic uh, or more structured with better to have uh, some you know set of points that you need to 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 ask hmm? can be one-on-one -on -one. so you have an interview with one person so if you have five users you make five interviews or uh, what we call a focus group so the interview is made with one researcher and five people around of the of the same kind of target users and so you ask questions to all of them they can reply and then discuss among themselves uh, and they can compare their impression among themselves they, com they can complete each other's answers and so on so you get the information from the group in a way it's less effort because you only do one meeting but it's more difficult to manage Okay, because you need to uh, really be sure that everybody's uh, information is taken into account and there's no one dominant uh, speaker that uh, and the others just shut down because it's too invasive or too 
uh, but uh, it may also extract some group dynamics uh, that one-to-one -one interviews will not ex uh, will not uh, uh, show mm -hmm. some conflicts probably huh? i'm doing this way no you're doing wrong and so no and so on uh, i always told you and uh, so there's something interesting that happens um I'll tell you a story. Wha we we did uh, talking about focus groups. I remember. Then we we see the method. But uh, I tell you, uh, one work we did was try to understand. Uh, we work in a, in a. Um, I don't know how to call it, but in a place where the people with disabilities were living. Okay, it's a, a place where they were hosted, uh, and there were some educators, some nurses that took took care of these people with. Uh, some had the mental disability, some had the physical disabilities. Okay, so we wanted to understand whether these smart homes or uh, wearable technologies and so on could help some way, in some way, the nurses that were working there. And so what we did was a focus group, and uh, we started with one very simple question. So we have the group of nurses in the same room, and we said, let's just tell us your typical day describe us what is your typical day what do you do normally in the morning in the afternoon and then and so on and at this point and then we ask we, we in the discussion we uh, add some questions saying, okay but let, let tell me more tell me more about this and do you think it's problem uh, do, do you think this is a problem or what does it feel you more what does it create you more more anxiety what are the actions that you do in the day that worry more about you uh, that make you worry more and so on and so when we started we had many ideas about all the fancy things that technologies or home automation could do at the end we identified the main uh, concern that was something that we already had inside and they didn't know what to, how to do their main need was uh, they were afraid that some of their hosts of people living there uh, was calling them and they couldn't hear because the structure was, was big and so they couldn't hear if they're shouting from the other side of the of the, of the structure or maybe during the night uh, if somebody fell from their bed or something like that they they will not find it until maybe they need the next round they did rounds every half an hour or so so what they wanted really is something like the the uh, ringing a bell but if ringing a bell is normal for normal people, people with disabilities cannot do that physically. Okay. So they want an automatic system for being at, mm, notified when somebody was calling, when somebody was having a uh, seizure, uh, or somebody was, uh, did fell from, uh, would fall from their bed and so on. We never imagined that the number one, the top one priority for them was a bell notification. Okay, so it's something that you only discover when you really try to understand what they're work, how the how people are working, and what they're thinking. Mm? You cannot imagine other people's work until you talk with them. <coughs> Users know what they do. Users know what are their problems, but usually, usual users don't know what they want. If we went there and we asked for them, what is the feature of a smart home that you would like to have we would never have gotten to the real problem they would start saying something fancy like uh, i don't know the schedule on the tablet or calling everybody for lunch or or I because maybe people users are not designers let's not with the jobs we are the designers we know the technology we know the potential of the technology we know what can be done and cannot be done and we can see the application of technologies in areas in domains in activities in tasks where the users don't see it it's not their job so creativity is on us you cannot ask a user what do you want if they don't have the capability Another example, I once uh, chatted with some people, we were doing some work, again, 
with smart buildings in that case so getting all the information like uh, temperatures and uh, uh, power consumption and so on okay so the idea is okay once you have all the information from a building or from the environment from the power consumption water consumption temperature number occupation of the so a lot of data what do we need with that so we did some interviews with uh, um, energy managers you know every building has a person which is appointed as, a, as an energy manager at the polytechnic are of course people from the energy department and they asked them we asked them what do you want if we want to build an information system for you with all this data what are the main functions for you The reply was, well, if I could have an Excel, an Excel file with all the data, I would be happy. An Excel file. No, kill me before, okay. Because they didn't have the, the it wasn't their job. It isn't the job to imagine that you could have actually a dashboard with some alert set with some uh, real time uh, data processing and so on. Okay, today it's more normal because we, uh, we see, but this was some times ago. <coughs> people will tell you what they know they cannot tell you or give you the, an idea for a product uh, that they doesn't exist yet they will only try to project their needs onto the existing and known solutions something that is already existing and they already know it so they can say oh I would like that if you show them something new they can maybe it's all oh, that would be nice but you need to show them you need to understand that they, that is what they need and then propose it so subconsciously they know or they feel that they would require something but they cannot not, they are not able to express it nor to find a solution okay so a direct question what do you need is wrong hmm? or oh, wrong it will not give you the right information it will not give you the important information they will tell you something to to answer to be polite to answer your question but that would not be the main point in many cases they will try to tell you what you f what they think you want to hear so if you try you, you say okay i'm trying to build something with a smartphone or with a sorry a smart watch for example they will tell you ah smart watch would be nice for you would be happy they are happy because they made you happy and you are building together something which is useless um especially for new products uh, that people have never had experience Okay, so right now, for example, people with voice assistant, a lot of people already have some experience. They know what they are. Maybe they never used it, but they saw it on TV. They saw it in some, some TV shows or uh, TV series. People using uh, an Alexa or Google now, uh, or Google, uh, okay, Google, uh, well, there's a comment. So they have a, an understanding more or less of what they do or how to use them. And so they maybe reply. But two years ago, they would have never had any experience direct experience with this idea so they could never imagine using them for example hmm? <coughs> and people take the current context for granted so for example in the case of workarounds why are you doing this well because yes okay i'm doing this in this way because i'm using this way it's a uh, a reflection on on why some action is preferred to some other action cannot be expected from the user executing that action only from a, an observer that try to understand the bigger picture there are exceptions but these don't we, we cannot put on to the shoulders of the users what is really the task of the researcher hmm? of the aci engineer okay so these are the this is the the reason why we cannot just ask them hmm? we need to take a more indirect approach uh, finding a group of users from all the possible categories classes stakeholders maybe oh if our system is new maybe we can try to find users of a similar system or the previous version of the competitors that are already familiar with some concepts that could be an interesting target case um or non-users somebody which is currently not using it any kind of technology for that specific task they are both interesting no depends uh, these are um, 
marketing of uh, observation targets so we try to replace an existing product or we can or, or we try to expand into an area where these products the other products are not used but they will give you different information some of them will already have hooked into the mental model of some system so it will be very much much more difficult to change our mental model the others are more blank huh? okay for, uh, for their assumptions so they will bend a bit more easily towards the model the model you propose but they probably also will lack some basic understanding some basic concept about the goal so you will extract different information from them in your project you try probably to find like people more expert and less expert a mixture of different people because every category will tell you some bit of information and if not possible try to if, if you don't find uh, you know uh, you want to do something for jet pilots and you don't you don't know a lot of jet pilots uh, probably i don't know maybe find a taxi driver uh, or something like that somebody that maybe have a subset of the problems or some video gamer that uh, likes uh, mm, flights uh, or some cockpit designer i don't know so somebody which is in some ways related you cannot if you cannot go or reach the exact target users and always remember involving participants requires something so go build uh, buy some candies for the interviews that you are going to do next week okay um and then <coughs> you must execute the interview finding some time and place which is comfortable for everybody explain why you're doing the interview it's not for testing you it's for testing my idea it's for testing my system you are helping me i'm not judging you this is very important to set up at the beginning <coughs> and more importantly even when, when we'll do usability testing the user is never under exam hmm? or under evaluation we start with open-ended questions open-ended so less people talk unbiased we should not let the user perceive the, what is the information the request that, that we would like more but the reply we would like more and not leading so i i, I it's not a question where or well, the question already contains the answer hmm? so it's difficult to word the questions uh, ask the question and give them time to answer so don't don't be too fast and in many cases uh, they give you maybe some answer and then let some let them think give some time and they maybe come up with a second reply which is better than the first one because we are interviewing them out of the blue or something that they never thought about thought about so they, we need time to process okay to understand the, even for the people that is being interviewed to to understand the context and then if some interesting comes out in a question before moving to the next one that you have in your list uh, follow up on the first tell me more about this why do you say that they do you say that does it happen often often uh, so that you can uh, deep dive into interesting points and some of these interesting points will be the feature of your system because you see if you see that the same point is coming out uh, in many people then that will become a selling point an important point hmm? something where uh, you should really care okay uh, I, I'm guessing that we are a bit running uh, out of time but since we are maybe already seeing tomorrow I, I the next step here it would be some more practical information about how to structure this question how to organize them We'll, uh, we'll continue discussing them tomorrow morning, okay? So, thank you. <laughs>